Lindsay, pastor of the Greater Bible Way Missionary Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan. Well, thank you for tuning in to itswebtv.com. I pray that the Word of God that you hear each Sunday is relevant to your lives and that it enriches you in a way that you can walk more closely in His steps and in His will. We pray that you, if you have the opportunity, will stop by and worship with us at 1525 Townsend Street in Detroit, Michigan. Again, thank you for tuning in to our worship service on itswebtv.com. Can't stop 
this bump right yes. now. Right. Now, before I tell you where it came from, uh -huh. I need to tell you just everybody will know if they don't know already. I always have a story. Mm -hmm. So the first story I got to tell you is, you know, growing up as a child, people would all, my last name is Morton. Right. Uh -huh. So people would always go, are you related to the Reverend Morton? <laughs> right. And I'd go, no. Well, growing up as a kid, you heard it so much. Are you related to Reverend Morton? By then, you're getting offended. No, I'd have told you, no, I'm not related <laughs> to Reverend Morton. So then as time goes on, somebody said to me, are you a preacher? All right. I said, no, I'm still a teen. I was like, no, I'm not a preacher. <laughs> well, you should sure act like a preacher. I said, no, I'm not a preacher. Well, my wife and I in our past church started going to a church, and the pastor said, you know what? You have a way of ministering to people without them knowing that you minister to them, and I want you to preach the word. Mm. I look back, and I said, who? And they said, you. So, he suckered me, if you will, into preaching the word. And I started going through late speaking class. Then I started preaching the word and getting involved in the ministry. And it was time for my wife and I to move on. And I had, I had lunch with the pastor. <laughs> and the pastor looked at me and said, you preached before, haven't you? I was like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> he said, I need you to preach in my church. So, saying all that leads me to where we are. You can't stop this bum rush. <laughs> and I know you're probably wondering where the title came from. But if you know... By now, you should know that music is, I hear everything in music, no matter what type of music it is. So, when I heard the song from Public Enemy, is there anybody familiar with Public Enemy? Public Enemy is a, a radical rap group. And you may not be totally familiar with Public Enemy, Chuck D, but everybody in the audience is familiar with Flavor Flav. Yeah. And... In that, that great poet laureate Flavor Flay says in one of his songs, Yo, Chuck, don't they know by now that they can't stop this bum rush? Uh, and, and I thought about that line, just stuck to it. It, it, was, it was like, this is what's happening in my life. You know, in terms of, of people saying, hey, are you a preacher? Hey, are you a minister? And I kept saying, no. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not a minister. I'm not a preacher. I'm not any of those things. Well, God thought otherwise. Right. Can't stop this bum rush. All right. All right. All right. All right. My scripture today is from, well, Deacon Palmer knows. <laughs> Romans 8, verse 28. And we know that God caused everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Yes. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? I'm sorry, I'm supposed to have people stand. <laughs> God don't forgive me. <laughs> but at my, at my last church, as I, as I mentioned, we had a real small congregation. Um, we did a lot in the neighborhood. We served the community. We gave our clothes to the needy. We, we had a barbecue. And it was done by a few people. Very few people made this thing go. We gave away things. When you, when you see on TV, and I'm not talking about any other church, but Greater Grace, for instance, they gave away bicycles. They gave away bicycles, but guess what? They were sponsored by the Pistons. They were sponsored by Ballpark Friends. And they own the news. And you see the cameras. And you see the pastor with the bicycles. And you see people coming together. But then you look at the church I was previously at. No fanfare. There was no, no TV, no media, no nothing. But we was doing God's work. Very few of us. We didn't have the Pistons, the Lions, Ballpark Franks, any of those people coming in saying, we're going to help you. We help ourselves. All right. You know why we helped ourselves? Because you can't stop this bum rush. All right. When God wants it done, right. no matter if it's three people or 50,000 people, it's going to 
going to get done if it's done in the name of God. Yes. Amen? Amen. 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 We, we always had these challenges of not enough. Whether it's money, whether it's people, whether it's clothes, resources, and me and the pastor would sit back and talk about the beauty of doing what God's called us to do. But see, the thing is, is you can have all the resources in the world, but if you ain't doing it for God, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. You can have very few people, and we would talk about, for instance, the clothing drive. We look back, and we have three bags of clothes two days before the event. We pray. And it's just like the, 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 the fish and the bread story. All right, it never ran out. We had enough clothes where we where people stopped coming, we had to take some of the clothes and take it to the salvation army. Amen. Amen. And if you're doing God's work, it'll all work out. And and I would always tell the pastor, I said, man, you know what? Oh, this works, this works out because the devil is trying to stop it, but the oh, devil yeah. can't do what? Oh, yeah. Say it with me. Stop yeah, this bum rush. Right. All right. All right. <laughs> the devil can't stop this bum rush. So that became my official motto. So if you ever hear me say, hey, and we're, we're talking, you can't stop this bum rush. I right. know where it came from. Um, I'm not going to break out into the whole military rap song, but I just let you know I can. But I'm not. I'm just saying that the devil can't stop me. scripture that I read doesn't mean that um, just because we profess our love mm -hmm. for the Lord and we call ourselves good Christians mm -hmm. doesn't mean that all good things will happen to you and you won't have any bad times. Mm -hmm. It's not what the scripture is saying. Mm -hmm. right? Right. The scripture means that God is everything. Right. But that does not mean that everything that will happen to us will be good. Right. Mm -hmm. Evil's here. Mm -hmm. And Satan is working hard. But I want everybody to remember that God is able to turn every single circumstance around for good. That's right, sir. May not be right now, That's right. but it's going to be in his time. Amen? Amen. Amen. As I stated, the devil's, the devil's always working. Always working. Especially in here. All right. yes, sir. You know, this, this is what All I want right. you to understand. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. That people that ain't in here, mm -hmm. the devil already got them. Mm -hmm. right. Why work on people you already got? <laughs> you got to work on the people that's here. Right. You know, the ones that's in these four walls. It's, it's, that's easy. Yeah. But you get people in here and let the devil creep in and bring in and doubt and all those other things. Right. Now we really got some. Right. Now, now, we really, now the devil really working. Uh -huh. So we need, to, we need to safeguard ourselves for that. Uh -huh. But now, it, it, the thing that I, I like to always say is, you know, the, uh, God, the devil wants to tap into what we, what I call our sinful nature. Because um, everybody got one. That's right. You know, no matter how holy we think we are, All right. no matter how we serve the Lord and how we, you know, preach the word and do communion and sing in the choir, we all got a sinful nature. That's right. And that's what the devil likes at. That's what the yeah. devil gnaws at. That's what the devil wants to get at. So, he wants you to do things that aren't pleasing to God. He wants you to turn your back away from God because now he has you. Mm -hmm. If you continue to keep your eye on the prize, which is heaven, right. which is God's eternal love, uh, and continue to love him no matter what the circumstance and do his will. Yeah. Did you catch what I said? Right. Do his will, right. not your will. Right. Because sometimes we do all these things mm -hmm. and we go, look what I've done. Look at everything that I've done. And we forget that God allowed us to do these things. Amen. You know, if I if I could digress just a moment. My, I, I learned from a long time ago from my mother. My mother is um, what I consider biasly one of the best mothers in the world. My mother is one of those people that um, when we were growing up, she would get and get, I'll use the term, extra money. Now, we know there ain't no such thing as extra money. Mm -hmm. right. But we, my mother would get some extra money and come to work and buy everybody in the office lunch. Mm -hmm. Look, she'd do all, these, you know, do all these things. Even at our last church, she would take, take things and, and buy care packages for people that need it. Right. And would, didn't want 
any fanfare. We want people to know she did it. But at the end of the day, my mom would come home with turkey tetrazine. I don't know about, I was eight years old. What do I know about turkey tetrazine? <laughs> and I'm like, where are you coming up with some of this Rixie food from? And when it, when I got older, what it showed me that she, that was her ministry, to give back. And she was doing God's work. Didn't want any fanfare. So guess what? When we didn't have food, like I, I remember my mom would make pancakes. Best pancakes in the world. Flour and water. I didn't realize we didn't have we didn't have any meat. I just knew we was having pancakes for dinner. And I thought that that was a treat. <laughs> but it was because God said, you know what? You took care of mine. So I'm going to take care of you. Amen. And Amen. I never forgot that. I never forgot the fact that my mom fed me turkey tetrazine. And it got to the point where I was embarrassed when we would have to take food to school. You know, everybody's taking chips and <laughs> turkey, turkey tetrazine. <laughs> and imagine coming to school as a, as a third grader with this pan and everybody's looking at what is this? And the teacher goes, that's turkey tetrazine. <laughs> you know, and, and you, you're embarrassed by it, but it's just, you know, when I look back on it, it was, it was nothing but that, that, that allowed us to, that had so little, to have so much. You know, and, and God wants us to be a joyous people. He wants us to be filled with love. He wants us to spread that love to others to get them close to knowing him. And then, for them to take that love and spread it. And, and when you spread that love, save other souls for Christ. He wants, he wants us to just take that eternal love and, and just blanket it. It's like a big field, and you and you got this sower. He wants us to just, just let everybody know that love. We can't keep it inside of us. Amen. We can't keep it inside of us. So, again, you can't stop this bum rush. You know, I, again, I have another story. I, and I, yeah. You, but, you know, it, God just works. God just works through people. And, and, and until you know God, you don't know it. And so, I talked to a friend of mine. This this was a while back. Um, she applied for this job. She applied for this other job. She applied for this other. Just kept applying for job. Had no success. She was getting discouraged at the prospects of finding work. So she she decided I'm gonna finish my degree. But she kept putting it off, putting it off, putting coming up with excuses. She, and at the same time, she hated her job. She didn't make a lot of money yet. So she had to make a decision because she was with child. But she was with child as a single, potential single mom. So as a potential single mom, you got choice. You got to do something for your family. That's right. So she decided that before she had the baby, she's going to quit her job and go back to school. She said, I got this much time. This is what I need to do. I started. I need to finish. So when the day was nearing, she was scared, she was apprehensive, and she said she heard a voice. She told me, she said, I heard this voice, and it was clear. And it said, everything's going to be all right, just trust in me. And she found peace with her decision right after that. So she quit. She said that she had this fire to go back for years, but was afraid of not having any money for her family. As she turned her resignation, of course, on faith, she was able to get along. Then received a call from her cousin, who told her about money from the No Worker Left Behind program. Right. And she happened to be going into one of the fields that the No Worker Left Behind program supported. Right. And more importantly, she'd be able to take care of herself and her family without working because she was able to get enough money to mm -hmm. tie her over until she got a job. You see, man's rejection. All right. Could be God's direction. Amen. 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 That's right. Now I can flash forward because this happened a few years ago. She's doing very well now. Amen. She started her own business. Amen. 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 She started her own business. So I'm going to say it again. You can't stop this bum rush. <laughs> so let me go back to scripture for, for just a moment, if you don't mind. Verse 28 states that all things work together for God. Who are called according to his purpose. All things, all things, all, all things, all. not just the good things, all, right. all things, all. not just the good things. Thank you, Jesus. This shows that just because you profess your love for Christ, there's
circumstances are not better than anyone else's. All right. All right. All right. Not better than anyone else's. Okay. You just have to you just have to hang in there. You got to trust that God is going to lead you down the right path. And you have to listen. You have to listen to what God is telling you to do. You have to, you have to just know that the voice you're hearing is God. Because the devil knows the Bible too. You know, sometimes I, I remember, and, I, and I'm, one of the things you'll find about me is I'm honest. Very, very honest. And one of, one of the things I remember as a kid, praying. You hear what I'm telling you? I'm praying. I said, God, please, this girl, <laughs> let her be ready to hear everything I got to tell her tonight. <laughs> and guess what? I'm thinking, as a young, uninformed guy, that God answered my prayers. So as we sit back and we exactly as we sit back, look, as we sit back and, and we, we sit in that quiet place that we all have and we reflect and we ask God for guidance. And we ask God for wisdom. And we ask God for purpose for what we're doing. All right. Know that it's from God. You feel it here. You know, when back then when I was when I was coming up, yes, this was before. Marriage. <laughs> you know, when, when you ask God for, for the right one, it comes along and you feel it. So it went, I didn't I didn't look at her and go, God <laughs> answer this prayer. I really prayed. I really prayed. And, and, and God answered my prayers. You just gotta discern right. what is God and what ain't. Right. You have to discern yes, what's on this shoulder. Versus right. what's on this show. Right. And the minute you do that, your whole world open, opens up. So, it, 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 it's, it's also one of those things that, that we we come to we come to realize we have, we come to realize that if we believe that if we serve God, do everything we're supposed to do, and we love Him. Isn't that true? Yeah. We go, Lord, we serve you, we worship you, we do everything. Why am I drain all stopped up? Why am I get robbed? Why am I current short so high? You know, we we question God for every little thing. Amen. But the question is, why not you? Why not? Why not you? God hasn't changed his love for you. He has not, he, he has not changed his love. In Romans 28, it doesn't promise that those who love God. We'll have better circumstances. Right. It says there'll be bad things, but God will be there to work them out for you. Yes. He didn't say, He didn't say, if you if you follow me, everything's gonna be rosy in the world. He said, follow me with all your heart and soul. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't say everything is gonna be worse, rosy. You know, an example of this is the expression that people use all the time. We say in tragedy, something always comes out. We also say that we learn from our mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. We also take. We also say that in order to appreciate something, it has to be taken away. Mm. And I watch movies. And from so there was a movie that said uh, it was the Five Heartbeats. And Duck said, <laughs> Duck said, in order to be a true artist, you gotta go through a struggle. And, and, and lastly, is in order to uh, in, in, in order to to really appreciate what you have, you gotta know you have it. That's what that's what people always say. But the, the, the reality of it is that sometimes God just wants to get our attention. All right. All right. Sometimes sometimes right. God puts things on you All right. so that you know He's there. That's right. You know, because if you, sometimes you take God for granted. Sometimes you go through you go through life and all these things happen, and you first thing you say is. I'm I'm, right. I'm, I'm highly favored. All right. I'm, but the minute something bad happened to you, right. you turn around, you ask God, I did everything you 
told me to do. What is this? You know, you, you chastising God like he's not your father. You know, you're sitting up there going, God, you saw me. You saw what I did. And so guess what happens? What happens is it, what happens is it becomes less about God and more about you. Because you stuff and go, you saw what I did. You heard what I said. You heard me preach today. Why did I get a flat tire on the way home? I threw your word. I, I put it out there. What is, why I got a flat? Uh -uh. You got to put your trust in the Lord. Yes. And again, I, a million stories. I could, I could be here for four years telling the story. <laughs> my, my wife will tell you, my son will tell you. One time we were driving home from picking him up from school. And I'm in the car. And here's some black ice coming around that curb at 75 in the lodge. Car spun, rush hour traffic, 535. I'll never forget it. Car spun three times. But before it spun, it was going to a wall. Something, and we all know what it is, pulled the car away from the wall. Spun the car three times in rush hour. Hit the wall, straightened up the car, and got off the freeway. And I got off the freeway. I said, oh, Lord, what kind of damage do I have? And I said, how am I going to tell that woman I had an accident with the kids in the car? I messed the car up with a thousand dollar duck. And I'm like, how am I going to go home? And I get out the car. I think, ooh, no damage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's exactly what I said. Thank you, Jesus. And I said, thank you, Jesus, that we were safe. But I also said, thank you, Jesus, that I didn't have to explain to her. <laughs> and so what ended up happening was the next day, we were thinking about selling. Somebody came to, to take a look at the car, and there was no damage, and they, told, they tooled around in it, and everything was cool. The next day, I get out and I had a flat tire. I had a flat tire on it because somehow I found out some of the rim was pulled away from it from the accident. And I put air in it, I put air in it, and went in the house. Came back out, tower flat. And I said, okay, what I'll do is fill up my air tank, and I'll drive to the gas station, put air in the tire. Well, I did that, guys, put air in the tire, prayed over the car. I said, Lord, I need to get the bell tire. Now, I live on Linwood and, and Chicago Boulevard. I said, I need to get the 13 mile of wood. I said, Lord, we're going to get it. Prayed over the car, got in the car. Drove the 13 mile and we stepped out the car. The tire went boom. <laughs> and walked into the and walked into a bell tire. And the guy said, Well, how'd you get here? I said, right there. He said, No, how did you get here? I said, God. And he all went, right, God. All right, all right. He said, Your tire, he said, your tire's flat. There should be no way that you should get here. And in my mind, y'all know what I was thinking. All all right. You can't stop this walk, bro. <laughs> God wanted me to make it, amen. amen. God wanted me to be there. So, I, I, I say all that to say that, you know what? If it's for God and by God and not by you. Not saying that you ain't going to have difficulties, but they're going to be easier to, to, to hold on to. You, those difficulties ain't going to be as bad because you got a father that's caring. You got a father that understands. You got a father that knows that you're going to get through it. You don't know you're going to get through it, but your father knows. He says, trust in me. Hold on to me. But we can't do that. You know, we hold on to, we hold on to man. We hold on to us. And, and, and we go, oh, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know how. I'm sure everybody in here thought, how am I going to do this? And it get done, you go, Whoa. I didn't think that was going to happen. <laughs> I want you to remember that Jesus didn't suffer so that we wouldn't. So remember, Jesus did not suffer so that you would not suffer. He suffered so that our sins would be forgiven. And we have life eternal with the Father. Realize the best is yet to come. As you go through things in life, remember that God wants you to bring people close to him. You know, each one of us, we have a, we have a, a, a ministry, if you will. And I see great potential here at Greater Bible Way since I've been here. We have, we have a small congregation, but Pastor Lindsay has a vision. And his vision is to have these pews filled. His vision is to have the pews filled so, so much that people are standing up. And I would love that. That would be a, a, a great, that's 
word is going door to door. It, it's singing in the choir, but you know what? For me, one of the biggest ministries that I saw coming in this door was Michelle giving us a card, making us feel welcome. That is, you know, that's a ministry. You know, not everybody's going to be up here preaching. But having somebody come through that door and feel loved, feel welcome. Everybody here made us feel welcome. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is the next week, we get cards. Do you know how, do you know how we felt about that? We're like, this is the, you know, this is the place to be. You know, <laughs> it, 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 it's that somebody took the time to say, we love you. We don't know you, but God told me that I love you. And that just, it, it just, it, it, it touched me. And, you know, your ministry could be the choir, because I was I was watching you work it out. I was glad I was up here because you was working it out. And the choir responded. They was on fire. You were throwing your hands out there. They was harder and harder. And, and, and the ones over here, they was getting higher and higher. And, 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 and the, the, you know, you were on the organ and you, you had your groove going and you came to the piano. I was like, they are working it out. She could have got up there and said, y'all follow me. I'm about to work y'all out. By the time y'all get done, your hair's going to be sweaty and nappy. <laughs> but you said, we, we in this for God. We ain't doing this for, we doing this for God. Amen. And y'all showed out. Amen. Y'all showed out. So, in conclusion, if you, I, I want you to look at 1 Corinthians 7.17. 7, Let's say it together. You cannot stop this 